Hi everyone, it's Tess from teachwithtess.com and I'm here today to talk about um, the new regulations that are coming out of China at the moment, which will affect us all, but how we don't quite yet know. So I'm going to give you a summary of, of what's happening, then I'm going to try to put in context where these regulations and why they've, they're, they're coming about. Um, and then I'm going to just sort of break, th go through the different um, things that are going to change and how it can impact us or may impact us. So I apologise in advance if I look away because I have quite a few notes here and I will be reading some of them because I don't want to make mistakes um, and my memory is not 100%. Um, so let's start off with the summary. Why and what is going on? So the Chinese State Council, which is an administrative body, issued a policy note which is called the 720 policy. Now what that means is that it is, it's not a law. These are regulations that can be put into place and interpreted differently depending of the regions. But it is something that will further regulate private tutoring industry, the private tutoring industry online or including online, not just online, the private industry, the private tutoring industry, full stop. So that's basically what this is about. So what's the context of it? The context is actually quite interesting. So basically, the Chinese government wants um, to address um, the ageing population that it has, mainly due to the one child policy that was in place for a, a certain amount of time, quite a while. And now they're challenged with the fact that they're trying to encourage parents to have more than one child or to have several children. And what is being noted is that parents are not doing this because of the cost of bringing up children in China. And this is mainly due to the cost of tutoring to help their kids get into these very prestigious, very competitive universities um, that they see as the best thing possible for their children. And they will pour huge amounts of money into it, but they can't afford to have many children to do this. So the government wants to address this, and that is what's driving these changes. Um, and also they are going to up the role of the state in providing affordable housing, education and health care. And um, through a mixture of all these things, the government is hoping to see an increase in the birth rate. And they want the public sector to increase its role um, in education and restrict the private sector's role in education. So that's basically the context. Now, what are these changes that are being suggested? Let me break them down. And this is where I may look at the screen. I apologise. I hate doing this, but it's quite important that I get this right. So let me lift it up so it's not too far away from the camera. All right, I'm going to just walk you through these. So basically, what's going to impact us ESL teachers? Well, first of all, the training institutions that provide core subject provision would have to register as non-profit. That's the first thing. And this would mean banning companies that teach the school curriculum from making profits, raising capital or going public. So it would mean that they cannot receive foreign investment, investment either. Now, as an ESL teacher, this could affect me, affect you, because if in investors walk away from the K-12 sector, it could result in companies folding. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that the council wants parents to provide a more holistic education. And this is quite interesting, actually. Um, they want children to have more um, knowledge and what's the word? Training isn't a word. But anyway, more knowledge, more education um, around household duties, sports, reading, and ch the parents are being encouraged to um, take more or pay more attention to their child's mental health, which I think has fundamentally got to be a good thing. Um, and to do this, there are a few things that they're doing. One of them is that there will be no tutoring, no online tutoring lessons at all at the weekend or after 9pm. And all online tutoring lessons have to be 30 minutes or less. So how could this affect us? Well, it means that there will be less hours for us to teach. 
That's the first thing. The second thing is that they are also going to ban the use of foreign curriculums. So they're also going to um, tighten the scrutiny of foreign textbooks. And they are also, and this is the biggie, they're going to ban the hiring of foreign teachers outside of China. Hmm. So what exactly could that mean for us? This is quite important. So it could have a huge impact on companies such as Wales, VIP kid, Q kids, those sort of companies, because um, these companies specialize in overseas tutors. So if they can no longer use them, how are, a, how are they going to exist? And we'll have no work. So that's something that's quite worrying. Um, and it would also mean that some companies such as Wales, who use curriculum from uh, the National Geographic and the Oxford Reading Tree, will have to completely overhaul their curriculum. So it's a huge, huge potential shift This just in this one regulation, this one rule itself. The other thing is that um, they're going to prohibit any form of um, training online for preschool children. So that would basically mean six to seven year olds and under would no longer be able to have online tuition. A lot of my the kids I teach, you, you teach will be of that age. So that is, again, a market that is going to reduce. So there'll be less teaching for us, for sure. So let's just talk about the implementation of this. What is going to happen? I, you know, there isn't any official note or guidance yet as to when this is going to be put in place. We don't know. Um, I would imagine a lot of it would it would be logical that it's going to be when the school year starts that these regulations will kick in so it won't be long but let's just talk about the sort of things that it's going to focus on nine cities that are going to pilot these now um i want to just run through what is being suggested in these pilots and the cities and i apologize in advance for the pronunciation of them because i can't speak Chinese which is embarrassing and the pronunciation will be terrible so I apologize anyway this is what they're going to do I've got to read my notes for this so the nine cities that have been selected to pilot these three measures are Beijing Shanghai Shenyang Jiangsu Chengdu Zhengshuo, Changxi Weihai and Nantong and the um what they are going to be trialing are to restrict private tutoring of core academic subjects and to extend school offerings for after school activities. Um, and then the third thing they're going to do is to regulate private tutoring companies that are fee charging. So these are the cities that are going to be trialing that. Now, I know from personally, I have a lot of students in those, those cities. So we're going to see the effects of this pretty quickly. So that's the first thing. So what may happen to us ESL teachers and our companies? Good question. So this is so so the, the 720 policy basically regulates training um institutions that are registered in mainland China. So how we're affected um, in companies like Wales and Magic Ears and QKids and VIP Kid, etc., really depends on where the companies are registered, what their legal entity is, and how they're able to navigate these changes. It's very, yeah, this is the big unknown because we don't know what they're going to do here. We don't know how they're going to get through this and round this, but you can be sure they're all going to be in offices now, scratching their heads, trying to figure out what to do. But basically, I think from all the research I've done, all the reading I've done around this subject is that the priorities are going to be that they're going to clamp down on academic tutoring and restrict the crammers that, you know, these kids go to quite severely. And I think also that they will be cutting ties with, um, you know, between private enterprise and tutoring. That's what they don't want. Um, I think those are the biggies. So what can you do? This is important because... It all sounds very doom and gloom, really quite stressful, scary, but I'm a big believer in change can bring opportunity. So I'm now going to talk about suggestions of the sort of things that you can do to prepare for changes that may come. First of all, um, I would say that you could, if we think about these scenarios, you know, basically, the the worst case scenario is everything goes pear shaped. These companies shut down, and uh, there'll be no more work for us, which are probably is unlikely. 
Um, and then the best case scenario is that nothing changes and we're all working just as we have done for ages. And I don't think that's very likely. Um, it could be somewhere in between and we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. So um, my suggestions are that you can go off and consider companies that are not based in China. There are lots of ESL companies out there and I will put a list of those who are not based in China below. Um, that's the first thing to do. Go off and see what's out there. Now, the only problem there or the only challenge there could be that they may well be saturated from the amount of teachers that were coming in during the COVID pandemic. But now there are going to be teachers who are going to want to jump ship or prepare for what may happen in China and are going to, again, be looking at these companies. So there could be a lot of people going after this and often the pay is not as good as the Chinese companies, but it's something, it's something. So those, that, that's the first thing to think about. The second thing is, that, and, and this is probably what I would go for personally, is to go independent, completely independent. I used to have my own ESL company when I worked in France um, and specialised in business English around the nutrition industry. Sorry. So I may well go back to that niche and go back to my contacts and go back to uh, working with French nationals. I know that's that's probably what I'll do. But it requires quite a lot of work because you have to market yourself. You have to have your own platform. You have to decide how you're going to do it, how much to charge. You need to do everything yourself. So there is a lot more work involved than working for a company like Wales English or Magic Ears. But it can be a really positive step because it means you can set your own hours. You don't have ties to anybody in particular, any company, any any nationality. You can teach people all over the world. So it's quite an exciting thing to do. And it's very much you developing your own online brand as a teacher. And there's a huge amount of opportunity out there. So that's the thing that's quite exciting and I think could be a solution for many of us. Um, and we can potentially make quite a lot of money from it because you can charge more than we get paid in dollars. And also you can get paid in your currency, not necessarily in dollars, which will be wonderful. So there we go. That's the first thing. Now, if you don't, or the second thing, the third thing is that if you don't want to take on absolutely everything from A to Z with independent or going independent, there are companies out there such as um, Pre -pa Pre Preply, iTalky, Amazing Talker. Um, and I haven't looked into whether or not they're hiring, but uh, oh, and Michael Class. And these are the sort of companies where they will help you develop your brand they help market but they do take a cut so you know but it, it may be an easier route forward um than going 100 percent independent although i will add to my you know that there's a lot online for, for for people who are going independent you can do courses i'm a great believer of educating yourself so there's some fantastic online courses that you can do to help you build an online brand as an independent teacher you can also go to companies like Twinkle, uh, companies, websites like Twinkle, Teachers Pay Teachers, and you'll be able to find lesson plans, ideas for classes, ideas for all sorts of stuff. So there is stuff out there, but it does require work. So if you don't want to do that, these other companies may be a solution. But you've also got companies like Splash Learn, who are a maths based company. I've made a video. Go have a look at that. And OutSchool, who, again, nothing to do with languages, but you can teach all sorts of things on OutSchool. So that's another really interesting thing to consider. So those are that's really what I have to say on this right now. Basically, I just want to end this video with some positivity because this is quite scary for many of us. Um, it really is something that can pull the rug out of many people's, you know, from many people's feet. <laughs> that sounded terrible, but you know what I mean. And, and I just want you to see this as an opportunity to open doors and to think about what you really, really want. You know, do you really, really want to be a teacher? And if so, great, go figure out how to make it happen. Go learn and do what you can to make your own brand and become your own boss. 100% your own boss, not working for a company who tells you when you can have time off potentially or how much emergency leave you're allowed, all these things. No, go off and do it 
and be your own boss. But if you don't want a teacher, go off and see what else is out there. It could be the time to move on to something completely new. Sometimes change forces some amazing things. And I know from personal experience, there have been many times when I thought the world was ending and it happened for a reason because all of a sudden this new door opened and I walked into a world that I didn't know existed and I made it happen. And I'm made new opportunities happen. So I'm still here. Obviously, coaching for Wales, there's no more coaching as such to help you get into Wales English. There's no point in that. However, I'm still providing coaching for those who want to work as ESL teachers, who want to work online, because there's still a load of stuff you can do. And all of that is relevant for being an independent teacher. It doesn't matter if you're working for a platform or if you're working for yourself. So on that note, just be super positive about this change. Be excited about what can happen and don't get sucked into doing nothing. Make sure you start planning now and thinking about what you're going to be doing in the next two, three months. OK, so I wish you all the best. Please, 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 if, you, if I can answer any of your questions, just throw down comments and message me and I'd be more than happy to have a chat. Anyway, let's cross fingers. Everything is not too bad. <laughs> Have a good one and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.